In order to ensure that the switching over of the parameter group is dependent on the specified conditions, we are going to take a look at the device internal logic and configure it for these special functions. So first, a brief summary of what these functions must achieve. The three conductor currents are to be individually compared to a limit value of 5% of the nominal value. As soon as the values of all three currents fall below this limit value, the indication I lower than 5% should be pending. We will further define this indication as we continue. The second criterion for switching over the group is the expiry of a 10 second time span after the motor has been started. So we need a timer that starts as soon as the indication motor on is initiated and which signals that the mentioned time span has ended. However, as only one of the criteria needs to be fulfilled for the switchover, we will link the two events with an OR function. The result of this function directly influences the state of the indication set group bit 0. As soon as one of these criteria is fulfilled, the indication set group bit 0 is applied and group B is activated. We will actually be distributing this operating sequence over two functions. Each logical function is configured in a so-called CFC chart. Some of these charts are already in the CFC folder as standard. These usually contain the frequently required interlocking or measured value tasks. With just a few mouse clicks, you can add a new chart here, which, for our example, we will rename Limit Value Currents. Open the Properties dialog using the pop-up menu. This allows you to rename your chart. Double-click the still empty chart to open it for editing in CFC Editor. You can now use the CFC Editor to create the logical functions and without any knowledge of programming whatsoever. You have the support of a whole range of function blocks, all of which are clearly arranged and available in a catalog. In order to compare the individual conductor currents with a limit value, you need a block of the type Lower Setpoint. Use the mouse to select one of these blocks from the catalog and drag and drop it onto the CFC chart. By double-clicking the function block Limit, you can set the parameters for the limit value. In the dialog box that opens, enter the value 5. The block interprets this value as a percentage. As each conductor current needs to be individually compared to the limit value, copy the block twice. The easiest way to do this is using the standard copy and paste functions. The second input of each function block must be connected to each one of the three currents respectively. Right-click the value connection of the first block and select the conductor current IA from the measured values offered. In the left-hand border, you will then see the entry for the linked information. The connection itself is visualized by a connection line between the information and the input of the function block. Repeat these steps for the other two blocks and the conductor currents IB and IC. The outputs of the three blocks must now be linked over an AND function. After all, we only want the parameter group to switch over if the values of all three currents simultaneously fall below the limit value. As you can see, the AND block only has two inputs as standard. However, because the number of inputs is a property of the block that can be parameterized, it's easy to increase it to 3. Now link these three inputs of the AND block with one output each of the three lower set point blocks respectively. We now want to see a clear result for our logical function. You need to connect the output and the AND function block with the indication I lower than 5%. This is to be transmitted as the result of the first logical function. It serves as input information for the second logical function that we're about to configure. As we haven't prepared this type of indication yet, we'll do it now. Without closing the CFC editor, switch to the Dixie device editor and open the configuration matrix. Now insert the information that we still require in our user-defined group motor control. Change the display text of this indication to I lower than 5% and route it to CFC as both source and destination. 
This ensures that this information is available in the CFC editor as both input and output information. Save your changes, close the configuration matrix and switch back to the CFC editor. Now all you have to do is link the output of the AND block to the newly created information I lower than 5% and you're done. The first logical function is ready. That said, the function still has to be compiled in a suitable language for the Cyprotec 4 device. For this purpose, the CFC editor creates an executable code, which is subsequently loaded to the Cyprotec 4 device together with the parameter set. As soon as the compilation procedure is finished, close the CFC editor and save your work in the Dixie device editor. The first logical function that we have just configured now generates a user-defined indication if the currents fall below the limit value. This indication is transferred to a second logical function, which then uses it together with the expiry of the specified time span as the criterion for the switchover. You already know the following steps for the second function. Insert CFC chart, change name of chart, open chart. Because it is the second logical function that triggers the actual switchover of the group, we will name the chart G switchover. In order to ensure that the processor capacity of a Cyprotec device is optimally utilized, the logical functions are performed in different run sequences. The run sequence currently set is measurement processing. For the second logical function, select the run sequence PLC1. To do this, simply drag and drop the newly inserted chart on said level in the runtime editor. Overall, there are four different run sequences in which the individual tasks are handled with different priorities. However, within a chart, you need to decide on one run sequence. As soon as the chart has been moved to the new sequence, you can begin configuring the second function. We now need a timer that starts at the same time as the motor and signals the start of a time span of 10 seconds. In the time and clock folder you will find a selection of blocks. A short timer is sufficient for our example, which you can just drag from the catalog the same as with the previous blocks. Link the start input of the timer with the indication motor on. In addition, just as a reminder, this indication is sent as soon as the function key is pressed to start the motor. Set the parameter of the timer runtime to 10 seconds. As your input must be in milliseconds, enter the value 10,000. In addition to the limit value shortfall, the end of the runtime is a second criterion for switching over the group. However, as only one of the criteria needs to be fulfilled, link the two events using an OR function block. Link the output of the OR function block with the information set group bit 0. As soon as at least one of the criteria is fulfilled, the output of the OR function block is activated, the indication set group bit 0 is transmitted, and the group B is activated. And with that, we've now also completed our second logical function, which, like the first function, still needs to be compiled. When the compilation process is finished, close the CFC editor and save your work.